You are listening to the Holistic Travel Nurse Podcast. Stay tuned for this amazing conversation with my new friend Beverly, where she tells us her story from pre-diabetes to becoming a diabetic type 2 from following her doctor and nutritional guidelines and then how she had an eye-opening experience because somebody shared with her this incredible book that I'm going to be just pretty much selling the same thing if anybody is a diabetic or type 2 they need to read this book it is one of the best diabetic books I've ever read so and she's had a huge success with weight loss we're talking over 60 pounds and has kept it off and reverse type two and has done so much for her health. And she's such an inspiration and she wants to share her story. She wants to know it's possible for you too. And what an incredible conversation. If you need a health coach to help you get through this journey and get you started, um, and you just don't want to read the book, you can definitely reach out to me at holistic travel nurse at gmail.com. I do answer all my emails personally, you can go to my website, which is all this is in the show notes for you. If you want to get a hold of Beverly, the show notes will have her information also. So stay tuned, share this with others. This is impactful, inspirational conversation. Beverly, thanks for speaking out. Thanks for being on my podcast. What a conversation. Naomi, the holistic travel nurse. Um, I have my friend, a new friend, Beverly on, and she's going to share her story with us today. Um, Beverly, um, has been successful with the scale. She's been ups and downs in her health. She invested in her health, invested in knowing what, understanding her body. She's read some of the same books I have and has an impactful story that I think that this is gonna support many others. So Beverly, thank you for being on the podcast and the channel today. Oh, thank you very much for having me. It's really nice to be able to offer some insight for, into my own journey that may be of help to other people. They might see some of themselves in me. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And um, they can explore ideas to conquering the scale. This was what this whole right. series is on. So um, you are from Canada. I'm in the U.S. And you said, this, I don't want to make you jealous. As we're <laughs> recording this, it's negative like 28 degrees or something ridiculous. Where I am, um, yeah. And I have my AC <laughs> on and I live in an RV and I'm at, Today it's warm in South Carolina, so don't don't get jealous. <laughs> oh, I'm jealous already. <laughs> <laughs> but I did a little only, hoodie I, on. <laughs> I only have another two months of this to go through before it starts to look like we might get anything like spring. <laughs> yeah, and then you're an artist, um, I so am. that is so exciting. You'll have to send me pictures of some of your art that's uh, definitely in galleries. I have a, a stepmom I might have you connect with who does. Um, art shows and has things in galleries. So oh, that's great. And sure. I have a daughter who's an artist. So I love my artists because I, I really don't. But I, I, I feel like I like crafts. But I'm not an artist, and I really love the way that artistic look at the world and then put it on canvas or oh uh, yeah you. yeah yeah definitely. And you have two children. You have five parent children. Absolutely. And yeah. And you've had this um, huge change, and it's 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 recent though too. It's only been how many how long? Is eighteen months. Been? Eighteen yeah. months. That yeah, from uh, August fourth, nineteen. Uh, not nineteen. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm really old. <laughs> August <laughs> August fourth, last year, two thousand nineteen. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me about you went and saw you had to switch doctors. You were telling me before this all recorded and you had to go see a new doctor and they did all this blood work and said you were pre-diabetic and you told me they sent you to a dietitian. Tell me about what right. happened with this dietitian and being finding that you have fatty liver and you're pre-diabetic and you need yeah. to lose weight and you're trying to do these things right. for your health. Right. Um, and so you see this dietitian and what happens? Well, what happens is I go in and I get the usual spiel about, uh, I'm sure it's a usual spiel because it's all on computer and she brings up the pages and you read along with her and then she goes and prints it all off and says, okay, here's your dietary schedule for the next four weeks and until you go back and see your doctor. And uh, so part of that regimen is eating three meals a day 
plus at least two snacks. <laughs> and that includes uh, grains at every meal and uh, no fat or low fat. Uh -huh. um, very little dairy if possible in any way, shape or form. Uh, okay. Use margarine, not butter. Um, <laughs> use canola oil, sunflower or safflower oils. It's no mention of any other kind. Um, yeah, basically the thing was to eat these uh, three meals a day plus plus have two snacks, preferably uh, at the minimum. Mm. And uh, if you had an extra snack, that's fine. There was um, not really a much discussion about, um, I would say, insulin levels, how your body's own insulin production functions. There was nothing to do with any of those processes our body naturally does. Um, so really, and I think I was in a state of kind of shock anyways, because I certainly didn't expect to have gone with a diagnosis of already being pre-diabetic. Um, the numbers up here for blood sugars are a little different in the U.S., and mine okay. was 6.4. I don't know Ooh. what that co goes to for the U.S. numbers. Oh, and I just have to correct something. I started this in August 2018, not 2019. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of where it was as the experience with the di dietitian. There was really... Uh, I don't remember being given any information on any what carbohydrate types were, like simple or complex. I don't oh remember goodness. anything like that. I, it was really just basically go home, eat, make sure you include bread, cereal, uh, which, you know, is grains. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, certainly meat and, and vegetables and whatever, because I'm not a vegetarian. And uh, include uh, fruit. You can have fruit a couple times a day. So um, I cut back the sugary drinks, that type of thing. Uh, cut down on junk food. But the thing was, I wasn't a junk food uh, eater to begin with. I wasn't a candy eater to begin with. So, and I wasn't a pop drinker, except with the exception of a very rare time. So the whole thing for me was a mystery as to why I was in this situation, because I really felt I was eating healthy. Um, you know, I did try and watch my meal planning and, you know, making things. So it, this was a real mystery and very, I was very much in shock and very, very distressed, very distressed. And then what so, happened yeah. that, okay, so you do 12 weeks of this, right? Uh, four, four weeks. Oh, four weeks. Four, four weeks, weeks of this. Yeah, four weeks, yeah. And then and what then happens I, with the checkup? Then I, okay, so then I go back to my doctor. So I never did see that dietitian again. I go back to the doctor um, who takes all the new numbers with all the new blood work and everything and sends me uh, a, you know, a, a notice, you better come in right away and see me after she got the results back from all of the mm -hmm. different tests. And she sits me down and she said, um, you are now diabetic your mm -hmm. blood sugars are 12.2 and she just looked at me and she said you are carbohydrate intolerant well <laughs> that was that was that was a kind of a double edged sword as the way i would put it because i first of all i did not know what carbohydrate intolerance was but it also became the jumping off point for me to discover what that exactly was and that's how it ended up leading me into um, taking hold of my own uh, life, basically, mm -hmm. to turn it around, because I thought, I have to find out what this means. So that meant that I had to uh, find out what carbohydrates were. I, I mean, I knew some, you know, but I really didn't know very much. Mm -hmm. So I remembered I had a friend who had also uh, reversed her diabetes, and she mm -hmm. had lost a ton of weight. And I called her up and I said, what did you do? And she said, the first thing you need to do is go and get these two books, The Obesity Code and The Diabetes Code, written both by Dr. Jason Fung. Mm -hmm. uh, and he is a nephrologist up here in mm -hmm. Canada. So <clears throat> I, I thought, okay, you know, there's nothing left to lose here. I have hit my bottom. My health is just so bad. I, mm -hmm. At the time, I, was, uh, I just turned 65 the day, two days before this mm. happened. 
And um, I had so much exhaustion. I was exhausted all the time. I was obese. Um, I, gosh, I had sleep disturbances. I had age spots all over my hands and my face and my arms. I was in pain from the arthritis. And uh, I was always hungry. That was the other thing. I was always mm -hmm. hungry. And, um, that, but I think for me, the tiredness was the biggest thing. The tiredness had been increasing for, for several years. And that was one thing this friend had pointed out to me. She said, you're always tired. And I said, yeah, but now it was beyond tired. I was plain old exhausted to the bone by this particular point. And I couldn't walk very far without being totally fatigued. The front door to the end of my driveway is maybe 40 feet. I would need to almost sit down and get my breath back just to go that far. And so I figured at that point that given another year like that, I would probably be walking with a walker to get around because I had absolutely no energy. I was totally tanked right out. Wow. And so you got the books. You started reading them right away? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Well, I, Were even you surprised? Before, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a whole new language for me, all of this sort of like medical information. It is a lot but, of medical information. But uh -huh. it's simple. I do have to say he does write it simply, so, and he has a sense of humor. So it, the way he would describe things was a real eye-opener. And I could certainly see why the formation of the processes that had now taken place in my body were affecting my life. I could understand them to some degree. And I mean, it took, I have to be honest, it took me rereading that stuff many, many, many more times. But I did uh, change the eating as soon as I could, like, which was like within two days. Um, mm -hmm. I changed my eating. And I, I'm one of these kind of people for something, I jump right in both feet. And I sort of figured I have nothing left to lose. So I'm just gonna go this cold turkey. And I just went through a binge in my house of taking out, yeah, lots of stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, replacing it. Yeah. So, but the books were fantastic. I have to uh, agree with you on that. And I certainly recommend them to other people that ask me about some help for themselves too. I always do. It's just the best, I think, um, information that's out there for the common layperson to read without having a medical background. Yeah, I actually, I have a medical background and I like that for me, I love that he puts, he makes it where the lay person and also he explains to us why, why the heck they are so wrong with them, all the studies yeah. and what's been said over the years and, um, and all the studies that have been done that just been ignored by mainstream yeah. media. That was a and shock. That, exactly. And that there's a massive amount of people that are just been, um, making money off you for weight mm -hmm. loss for years. Right. Um, and so, cause you said before we started this too, that you've done Weight mm -hmm. Watchers and before in the past and things. So as for right now, how successful are the numbers on the scale and how often do you weigh yourself? I don't weigh myself at all anymore. I finally <laughs> got down <laughs> from wearing a size three X at the beginning when I started down to a size okay. 14, 15. And I have, I've just basically maintained all my clothes in that, in that size category, maybe even a little looser right now. Um, so I, pro I, the last time I weighed myself, to be honest, I think was in April and I was sitting at 165 down from 230. So wow. I'm still, I'm pretty sure I'm still in the same thing. It isn't even of interest to me as long as I feel good and mm -hmm. I can wear my clothes, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm not noticing tightness in anything. And, not at all. Everything is just maintaining. And uh, when I saw my doctor last in, I think it was July, she said, I don't need to see you for another year. So, mm -hmm. she, and she just, it was really nice, um, Naomi, because I walked in, she hadn't seen me for quite a few months. I walked in and I was standing there and she just took one look at me, her jaw dropped. She broke into a big smile, came over and gave me a hug. And she said, you're such a pretty woman. 
Now, oh. when your doctor tells you that, you know you've done something right. So she was absolutely, you know, surprised and happy. And um, yeah, yeah. She just said, keep on doing what you're doing. Just keep on doing what you're doing. I don't need to see you for another year. And she didn't take any blood tests or anything at that time. So I think she could pretty much tell by, by looking at me that things are in pretty good position. <laughs> It's so exciting and it's so exciting that you feel like you know what's going on in your body you know what's going on with food you know yeah. how um, you feel so much better you have more energy you oh, know yeah. that you reverse the diabetes your livers in good yeah. shape now with your labs probably right is, probably is they haven't okay. taken any labs on that yet and that could be something maybe by this mm -hmm. summer when she wants to see me again she might want to do that just to be you know, I might give you things. some suggestions of some supplements to take oh, um, that will help okay. with your liver. Okay. But I'll do that after the recording um, yeah. and maybe send you some an email. But there, there, but you know what? I, I love that people have decided to, you know, to see that I feel sad for the people that still follow the medical guidelines. And I feel sad yeah. for the nutritionists that just follow this based on that we've been lied to. And they've been lied to. It's just what they've been educated. Yeah. Just what the yeah. physicians are educated. And it's only by like our, my podcast, or if you're watching this on YouTube, that the more we speak up, the more that we encourage one another, the more that um, we are going to be able to see the truth and understand your body and your yeah. body wants to balance and it wants to function. It just wasn't, it wasn't your carbohydrate. Um, I have never heard of that before that um, diagnosis <laughs> she gave you. Um, um, it carbohydrate intolerant, which is just. <laughs> bizarre to me. I've never heard that term before, but it's not that at all. It's just that it's, um, I wish they would look more at our insulin and the levels in our bodies and yeah. understand yeah. the insulin and yeah. what insulin's doing in hyperinsulin. Yeah. How are your joints feeling now? Just... Oh, I'm good. I'm very good. I only had one bad experience. I went away on a retreat um, because I'm a Zen practitioner. I have been uh, Zen doing meditation for over 40 years mm -hmm. and I went on a retreat in October um, to a new place with a new teacher and they I did not know this but they were eating vegan and I honestly do not handle grass grains and soy products well at all by day three I was in so much excruciating pain in my right leg it because I had an old injury there from an old accident mm -hmm. and and I so I couldn't figure out what was going on why my knee was in such pain and as the next day or so went on I could barely walk I, and I was so swollen and it was started and it moved right down to my ankle and it just felt like my whole right leg from my knee down to my ankle was encased in a cast yeah and then my then the swelling started to spread mm. to my hands and at one point my especially my left hand felt like it was made of marshmallow it was so spongy when I talk uh, touch the surface of it it was all it wasn't painful it was super tight super tight but really spongy which was a very very odd thing and my whole body was in pain I mean I just wanted my leg to be cut off from the knee down the pain was uh, i would say eight and a half to nine it was so bad and uh i did not know you know i did not know what the problem was um i was pretty certain it was because we had so much soy and so much grains i can tolerate a little bit of grains mm -hmm. uh like wheat i now i buy um because i love to bake so i don't usually eat what i bake but i love to bake and I like to taste what I pick. So I do work with uh, an organic um, a wheat. And um, it seems to, once in a while I have it, it doesn't seem to cause a problem. But I had no idea uh, about the thing. And I was, it only took recently until finally the pain went away, completely went away. All the swelling mm -hmm. is gone. And I put it down. It had to be all the soy because it was soy cheese, soy, mm -hmm. soy everything, mm -hmm. soy everything. And... Yep. Uh, Boy, that was a surprise. Yeah, that was a yeah. big surprise. We all yeah. have different food intolerances, and you don't know until you've taken the food out of your diet. You can go get yeah. your blood work, but until you literally just take a food out of your diet, which I highly suggest yeah. when you're he healing your gut. Um, right. That's it. That I have a food like that too, and it's funny because I have a bad knee also. And if I know um, I have sugar in my diet, to me, too yeah. much gluten, I can do very little. 
yeah. uh, same thing. And it might all swell up. My joints will hurt more, yeah. all those things. And I realize you got to pay attention to what's going on in your body, to yeah. the foods that you're, and you have to think yeah. of what the nutrients you're giving your body and whatever toxins that are possibly hidden in those foods that could be causing you issues. Well, you mentioned, um, you know, your gut. I had also been diagnosed with GERD, gastroesophageal mm. reflux disorder, and mm -hmm. acid reflux. And um, I haven't got any of that now. Absolutely none. Mm. It was gone in about the first, I'm going to say, three months. Three months completely gone. I've never had an issue since. Never, ever had an issue since. That's so amazing. No, yeah, no, nothing at all. Yeah, yeah, nothing at all. Yeah. I just it's, feel I've gained about 20, 20 to 25 years of energy and youth. <laughs> and, you know, I, I just feel um, I've got a life back. You know, I was getting old before I was old. And now mm -hmm. I feel like I got younger. <laughs> and I'm going to play it for everything it's worth. <laughs> Did you exercise during the time period when you were losing weight? A little bit, not very much, because... First of all, I was so flipping exhausted and the gym uh, was only five minutes away from my house and it was still an incredible chore. So I really didn't go very much, maybe once in a month, once a month, maybe. And this is interesting too, Naomi, because I used to be a fitness instructor. <laughs> I was also a female bodybuilder. Wow. Uh, not not in competition, but just uh, in the workout. So I loved yeah. working out and doing all of that kind of stuff. And I was a martial artist working my way up to a black belt, three different wow. uh, martial art forms. I only stopped doing that's where I injured my knee because I was 55 when I injured it a little bit old to be sparring and Picking things and stuff. Hey, that, that's ex that's you know what? More power to you, woman. Were you um? A, did you were you in karate or? I was form in a of form of karate and kung fu. Yeah, yeah kung fu. Yeah, yeah. That is yeah. so cool. At fifty five, yeah. that's yeah. inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. You were kicking I butt. It. I I miss it. I still I loved it so much. It was, I think part of it was like your body got a really good workout. I felt um. I felt personally empowered physically as well as it wor certainly worked on my self-esteem. And um, if it weren't for this knee injury that I ended up getting, which is what got me out, I'd go back in. I would go back into Aikido or something that is a softer Ooh. form if I could. But any kind of twisting the knee or something like that might actually not be very good for me. <laughs> and especially now, like this year, I'll be 67. So you know, I think I put in my time a little bit, you know. So, I know, yeah. I know. I was I was just going to talk about it on the podcast, so maybe we can talk about it together. You know, I loved his section where he talked about exercise is not necessarily needed for yeah. weight loss, yeah, and yet yeah. everybody wants to sell you these things for exercise. Yeah. And um, back in the day when um, I was skinnier, actually, then, and I, um, I, you know, decided to pick up running, which... It's funny because I don't know if my body was just ever, never made for running. And yes, this is my dog. I know if you hear her and she, <laughs> she sees things outside the window, so she, she likes to growl. Um, they always seem to come in when I want to record. But anyways, oh, yeah. <laughs> when I was training and I, I thought I'd, you know, get with my friends that we're all going to try to run and we were going to train to do this. I injured my knee with, with the Spartan race, um, mm. you know, the obstacle courses. And yeah. And in jogging and um, never had like, actually, I should have probably talked to someone to just see if I was jogging incorrectly and running correctly. If you ever decide you want to actually get into running, you probably should talk to someone who's a coach who can yeah, help you with yeah, your strides. Mm -hmm. um, because I just went out jogging and I jogged so slow. Like my friends could jog me uh, around me, but <laughs> I am the one that I looked so pitiful that I am jogging the lake and like strangers said, Hey, you're doing a good job. I'm like, I must look that pitiful that absolute strangers are telling me I'm doing a good job. I was like, <laughs> is running my sport? And my yeah. body's like, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And so hands down to those people who can, yes, I got the runner's high and I understand it. It's great. Mm -hmm. But is, Absolutely. is it my sport? Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, um, it's true. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, like I do remember... I think it was Dr. Fung who, who did say, as you, as you mentioned, that 
exercise isn't necessary. And yeah. one of the reasons that I remember him saying, and it made me very relieved because then it stopped my feeling guilty about not going to the gym when I was paying this Absolutely. membership. Uh, is that it's a stressor on the body when you change your lifestyle into this way of eating. So adding mm -hmm. another stressor on top is just going to bring the cortisol levels up, which may inhibit weight loss and actually cause some interruption to some of the other hormonal changes uh, and metabolic changes that are taking place while you're going through this process. So I thought, yes, this is just great for me. <laughs> Not <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and so I, I actually, you know, I, I did eventually, once I lost most of the weight, I did, did go back for a few more months. And then I, it's like you, like your question, you said, is this for me? I just realized, you know what, I don't, I don't need it. I, I love walking like in the summer, like not today, but in the summer, <laughs> spring or whatever, fall, I love getting out and just going for a walk. I just like mm -hmm. going around and being able to walk. And just go where I want to walk. And, um, and I'm pretty busy here sometimes at home and, you know, just doing, just doing things. So I just don't feel like there's any loss. Probably having a bit of tone development maybe might not hurt a little bit. But I don't really feel um, that I'm in a sort of a, a state right now where I'm concerned with having to make enough of that as a, a change. And I need to pay much attention to at this point. And, you know, I'm because st I'm still working with the uh, theory that I heard uh, read somewhere in the last couple of months that on um, the diabetic thing, because I do tell people I am consciously aware on a daily basis of the amount of insulin elevations that my body is being put through. Hmm. And so because I do not want to have that myself go backwards by mm -hmm. getting the in insulin elevation back up and starting to store uh, everything is fat again. I don't want to do that. So, and the, I know the only way you do by keeping your insulin levels down is by eating good, but eating less time. So you're not allowing an insulin production to raise more often during the day. So it allows your body to burn its own fat stores to, you know, to do this kind of uh, intermittent thing fasting, so. or I like to call it time interval eating. Time, yeah, exactly. And I, that's what I do. That's what I do. And it works perfectly fine. Um, I get people asking me all the time too, Naomi, do I stick to a particular amount of, um, fasting window i guess you'd call it and i say not really but it just seems like naturally my body's gone to an 18 6 window um and i said sometimes it's 16 8 sometimes it's 20 and 4 sometimes very rarely but i'll do a 24 hour i really let each day dictate for me now what i feel uh, to do and i just kind of follow my own body's own messages to me about whether I actually am hungry or whether I can, you know, if I just have a, like I make a coffee in the morning with some heavy cream and coconut mm -hmm. oil in it, I'll have two coffees. And if they hold me till one or two in the afternoon or even past that, if it gets past two, then I won't eat till dinner time. And that'll have been a 24 hours. So, and I'm okay with that. It's, uh, I feel good. I sleep good. Um, and I think that um, the intermittent fasting, I think when we don't force it, I think, I think because then again, you're looking at the cortisol production. Mm -hmm. If you're starting mm -hmm. to put that extra stress on your body, I think when we don't force it and just kind of be patient as we're moving through this process of this, because so many things are changing. I mean, you're changing your foods, you're changing what you can eat, how much you can eat, when you can eat, and um, your body's got to adapt to all of this. And it's not just your body. Um, my thinking became clearer. Mm -hmm. I noticed a change in my thinking, the clarity of my thinking within a matter of just a few weeks of beginning this. So there's a lot of other changes going on. And the more that that clarity was there, the more I was able to absorb things I was reading and listening to that were sort of helping me. And the other thing was, um, as the, sh the, f the weight was shedding off, which it came off pretty fast, once it started coming off, it came off pretty fast, um, I was getting my self-esteem and self-confidence began to, to grow larger as I found that I felt better about taking better care of myself mm -hmm. than what I, what I had been doing. And I don't think I was bad to begin with, but 
there was just sort of that extra something about, okay, today, I'm, maybe I want to wear something instead of sloughing around in blue jeans and a sweatshirt all the time, which is what I lived in. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I want to put on some, maybe I want to go out somewhere a little bit and just kind of look a little bit, you know, more nice, you know, other than mm -hmm. wearing blue jeans and, <laughs> and baggy sweatshirts all the time. So it was a, it's a process. It is definitely a process. And I think that um, taking some patience uh, with ourselves and, just being mindful, I guess, of what we are feeling like daily. And, uh, you know, looking at that, uh, I think is really, really important. Because I, I do see on some of the groups that I'm on on Facebook that it's to do with low carbs and stuff. A lot of people just, they want to jump in with this extended fasting stuff right away. Then they're feeling weak and dizzy and all of this. They don't even, they haven't read anything, perhaps. They haven't they actually, don't yeah. They're not they listening to a podcast. They That's don't understand right. their body and, exactly. and, and just trying things out. And I'm like, if you would seek to understand your body and know that it wants balance and healing for you and you yeah. work with your body and not just try to do all these fad things that are happening, but yeah. understand your body, yeah, the, the more the success is going to come. It's been coming with me and I've been mm -hmm. playing around with a little bit of cheating and messing around with certain foods yeah. and deciding, okay. Yeah. And for me, it's a, de a delay. It's like a two day delay. Sometimes if I eat something that yeah, causes me to do, it's not yeah. necessarily. So that's the bad part. So just realize if you eat something that is a problem, some food and you've like mm -hmm. cut it out for a long time and you add it in, it sometimes is a couple, is a couple day delay. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think that you're, yeah, I thank you for being on the channel because I believe that your story is going to impact somebody else. Somebody is relating to you, somebody yeah. else. Um, I mean, diabetes is a huge issue as, Absolutely. as my specialty. Um, I, I'd want anybody to understand that it is reversible type two mm -hmm. and, um, you don't need to go through all these little crazy things that say nutritionist. You need to pick up those books. I think that mm -hmm. his book should be given to every single diabetic when they're diagnosed. Yeah, I, I mean, agree. I think it's the best. I've read, um, I have read now, I think four or five diabetes books as my health coach career, and his is hands down the best. Yeah, and I agree. so yeah. I think if there was um, any physician that's happened to be listening to this, or nurse practitioner, or any any practitioner of some sort, or fellow nurses, and you, um, you know, you've helped a patient just newly diagnosed, tell them to pick up that book. Tell them their life depends upon it. It because does because he really does. I think I have it even right. No, that's the diabetes. I have so many books by me. I know <laughs> I have one of his books by me. Um, I'm always yeah. reading and studying something. So, well, the diabetes, it, code, but I really I believe that um, I want to see more people because the complications to hyperinsulinemia, which they don't talk about, yes. which is that type that's of type right. two diabetes right. or high blood sugars or all mm -hmm. those things. I mean, it leads to heart disease. Kidney yeah. failure. Oh, Siri, sorry to talk to me. She thought I was talking to her. Um, <laughs> all those things. And so it's, it's vital to your health to be invested in your health. Yeah. And I always tell people that you can take care of it. You can take care of it naturally. And it starts with what you're eating and how you're eating. Um, and I love seeing people that I'm actually going to inter be interviewing soon, a lady that has um, done the carnivore diet. I'm super excited about having someone that will be on my channel that will be talking about how she went yeah. carnivore and what it's done for her because mm -hmm. we're all different mm -hmm. and our Absolutely. bodies are all different. Mm -hmm. um, I, I interviewed Rachel who had success with keto, but had to do dairy free. So everybody's completely different. Right. So, um, but pursuing your health and, and knowing that your physician doesn't know it all with your diet or your, <laughs> if they send you to a dietitian, not necessarily, and that you have to pursue and, um, and that there yeah. are incredible yeah. books out there. There are incredible podcasts like this that I hope that yeah. women will be encouraged or men will be encouraged to going, Oh, I can do this. I can conquer the scale. I can understand my body. I can, um, choose, um, a natural approach to my health. Yeah. So. One of the things that I wanted to sort of mention too, is that, in my family, uh, everybody on my dad's side ended up getting diabetes type 2. Mm -hmm. um, his mother had diabetes type 1, and then he ended up getting diabetes type 2, and he died from complications due to it at age mm -hmm. 68. So I'm next year, I will be that age. His yes. sister, who is still alive, is in her early 80s, 
and she is on she is still very obese she is on 24 7 oxygen um, her lung functioning is way down probably only 20 or 25 percent um, mm -hmm. and she's got the um, peripheral neuropathy on mm -hmm. hands and feet my husband's sister because there's diabetes all through his family and my husband has it um, his sister who has just turned 60 had a heart attack major heart attack uh, three or four years ago and had to have surgery in her age 56 from her diabetes and her obesity and then last January or February something like that after the family members because they hadn't seen me from the summer I started until Christmas. Well, they hadn't seen me. Uh, they just kind of, their mouths all dropped. Because at that point, I had lost 46 pounds. I've currently lost close to 70 pounds. So when they saw me at 46 pound weight loss in just a matter of uh, four, to, four to five months, I think it was when they saw me, they mm -hmm. couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe it. And so they, some of them started to ask me what I did. And that one sister who had the heart, um, heart situation mm -hmm. uh, came to me and she is now doing this, but she's got so many complications. She's also got uh, liver problems now and she's developed kidney problems just at the time she started asking me. So she's kind of way along the track. And, you know, I've said to her, I know that these things are, pretty serious but you can still do this it may at least inhibit things getting worse may even help things from getting worse I don't know that it can reverse any of those things but you know about three four months in from last January to about April she said to me I'm off one of my um, one of my uh, diabetes meds now mm -hmm. and I was really happy so I saw her again through Christmas and it looks like she's lost some more weight um, and so she's still working with it. She's going slower. And I think that this is, this is something I think that everybody is maybe different in this, obviously, too, mm -hmm. is that some people don't jump in cold feet like I did and just go right in there and say, you know, I got to do this now. Some people, they want to take a longer time. They sort of want to um, maybe take those foods out slower kind of ease into a low carb, you know, healthy fat way of eating uh, mm -hmm. or keto way of eating uh, much <laughs> slower. Uh, and that's okay. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody has to sort of get this sort of turned around in their mind about the stuff that we've been told all our lives about what is good for us and what isn't good for us. And it's all backwards, you know, and exactly. so, you know, we, and, and I, I, I like, I'm not a medical professional, so you know, sometimes I get this feeling from myself, who's going to listen to me? Who's going to listen to me? I'm not a medical professional. I can't answer those questions. But uh, what I can do is I can say, look, if you knew me, if I show you my pictures from 18 months ago, what I looked like, I looked old. Mm -hmm. And if you see how I look now, I don't look like I was in my mid 70s. I don't look like I'm in my mid 70s. You mm -hmm. see the difference, somebody who has known me, and I said, this is all you need to know from me. If you need the medical information, please go read Dr. Fung's books for yourself. And then, you know, see if you, if you don't have a doctor who's working with you on this, find one maybe that is. You know, our system up here in Canada, our medical system is quite different than it is American. So it's a, maybe a little bit easier to be able to look around for a doctor and get some of, some of the help. Because now more and more are coming on board. They absolutely are. So I'm really pleased to hear that. Yeah, he's actually has a clinic in, um, Jason, Dr. Fung has a clinic in yeah. Canada. So I bet he's well known there. And oh, yeah. um, <laughs> he's made some strides there, which is just fabulous to see. Um, I'd yeah. love to have him on the podcast. I know he's a super busy guy. He's written now four books. That's um, right, bought all of them. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I applaud him for, you know what it was? I mean, it's not like this knowledge wasn't out there. It's just that nobody yeah. put it in and did the yeah. studies and had the passion to speak the truth and go and care. And it, it's just yeah. a rare commodity that, that we see these days. Yeah. Um, right. And so I, um, this is why this channel is exists. Cause I feel the same way. I want 
people to hear your story. I want people to know that they might relate to your story and they have this whole family history and there can be re some reversal done. We can save lives, to be honest. We can yeah. save kidney disease if we're honest. We can keep from yeah. fatty liver syndrome if people yeah. would um, know, understand that they yeah. they can make the changes. And and I understand the f that feeling like I, I felt like you when um, I felt like I was addicted to food and I was hungry all the time. I felt like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I felt like my body yeah. was just not, was not working with me and I didn't understand yeah. it. And I thought yeah. I understood it because I've been in healthcare for a yeah. long time. Yeah. And, but when I'm reading his books and then I've read other books and I'm like, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. I know. I know. And it's almost common sense. And it's like, this is so impactful and yeah, um, it is. empowering. Yeah. yeah. It's it, it, once, I think once I read the information, as I said, I'm not medical, so it took a few readings of the same information over and over again and listening mm -hmm. to him talk through some YouTube channels and things like mm -hmm. this that where he's done conferences and stuff, listening to it over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. At some point, I finally went, wait, wait, wait a minute, this is actually very simple how our body functions. Maybe mm -hmm. all the nuances of all the things behind some of the functioning is more specific, but the actual... You know, you eat food and then what kind of food are you eating? You know, how are you feeding your body? And then what is it happening? You know, I was having absorption problems, which is partly mm -hmm. what was going on with the GERD, I think, and the acid reflux. I didn't know that, you know. Oh, so, I mean, yeah, yeah, it was, you know, it, it, once malabsorption, it was, malabsorption, exactly. And mm -hmm. uh, wow, you know, Leaky so it's gut. crazy. Yeah, yeah. And there's a, I, yeah. I just interviewed and the podcast is just going to be aired before yours, but I interviewed a, um, a, a holistic coach who's had another podcast where he talks about and helping people heal their gut. And if you people worked on healing their gut, a lot of their other health issues would go away. Oh, and yeah. that is yeah. just a, absolutely, and not saying that, not saying that one diet is for everyone and not saying yeah. that you can't have any carbohydrates or someone can't ever have yeah. gluten, but there are people that can never touch gluten. Again, yeah, that's right. That's um, right. And there are people that have to stay away from dairy completely. There are people right. that can have dairy. I feel sorry for the vegans because I really do. <laughs> I do think that um, that meat and good quality meat is is is, is yeah. so important to our health. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I'm excited about having the next person on about talking about the carnivore yeah. diet. And, I, I have um, to tell you too that um, Dr. Fung and Megan Ramos contacted me in wow, may because, really? yeah because they saw my story on on their site on their facebook site um and i had put before and after pictures before the one that you saw me uh, okay. back in the spring and so uh, yeah i got a i got an email from dr fong and megan ramos saying that we would like so cool. we would like to use your story as part of our documentation on the reversal of diabetes where somebody has actually taken control of their life and their health reversed this diabetes and all the other conditions that went around it and we would like to um, give your story with your permission to the American Diabetic Association as well Sweet. to as part of documentation and then we would also like to keep in touch with you from time to time to see how you're maintaining your own health and you know, your eating situation and how your life is going and I said yes 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 <laughs> so that, that is I mean, just that's a validation you know it's a validation oh, that is so yeah. cool I, yeah, I, I mean yeah, yeah. I applaud them both for yeah um, their work. And I think that when you see him, I've only seen him talk, like you said, on YouTube and, but I can see that he cares. He's compassionate. And I work with a lot of neph nephrologists and one of, oh, one of the nephrologists I worked with, okay. he goes, don't compare me to Dr. Fung. I'm like, why don't you just go read his book? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm promoting his book and I am not getting anything from it whatsoever. I'm not going to make any money. I don't have an yeah, affiliation with Amazon. I might get an affiliation to Amazon. <laughs> at one point, but I don't at this time of the recording. Um, but I'm a huge advocate for yeah. understanding your body, educating your body, listening to this podcast and sharing it with other people, because yeah. I know that it's going to impact somebody. I know that our stories um, are going to impact other people and that yeah. there's going to be shared and there's going to, they're going to find hope and encouragement yeah. and they're not alone. And yeah. um, baby steps, let's just tell you baby steps and we'll give you encouragement yeah. and we'll give you all it's the praise. It is so self-empowering. And I mean, the, one, the other thing that I do is I still keep up 
on top of the information that is still coming out because Dr. Fung himself has changed a little bit of his information about fasting, especially for older people who are over 60. Mm -hmm. Because as I was saying earlier, a lot of people were sort of jumping on the extended fasting bandwagon, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. having problems. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he is, if I remember him saying this correctly, he is not recommending that for um, people over four days of extending fasting over age mm -hmm. 60, just because there are other issues like blood pressure and I don't know what else all out to be in there that may be affected over age 60. So, you know, I've, I've had people get really angry at me when I've mentioned that on some of the Facebook sites that I'm on, especially Dr. Fung's site, uh, to, that, that this is not a recommendation. Like extended fasting can be very dangerous, uh, you know, for some people who are just playing around with it and don't understand their bodies. So I think it is really important for people to stay on top of the education process Yep, and yep. Uh, stay current as much as they can or wish to because uh, you know some people just I don't know maybe they don't want to but I do want to know and there are other doctors out there too Dr. Eric Westman he's mm -hmm. from down in I think uh, North Carolina or something I'm not sure exactly where he is but anyways he's um, Duke University wherever that is <laughs> he teaches this in his classes to his medical students so sweet to hear that. I have not heard about yeah. that. Oh, um, I actually am going to do an episode. That's wonderful. I'm going to do an yeah. episode. So I'm just going to give a little hint. I'm going to be doing an episode on teaching on autophagy and yeah, um, autophagy mm -hmm. and a apoptosis. So understanding <laughs> those two things in your body and things that that will help with those two things in the body. So that is an episode to look for. Um, if you're listening to this way, way, way in the future, you can probably <laughs> look at my, um, my, my episodes and find that at, at this point, that is something I'm going to work on. I'm just, I've read a lot about it now and I am, I'm super excited to just yeah. share my knowledge on that. Yeah. And, and I will, I am going to do something about the liver because people don't understand the liver and kidneys. I always talked yeah, about the true. kidneys before, mm -hmm. but I want them to understand, um, the three phases that your all the things your kidneys do, and then all the things that can help your kidneys and all besides alcohol and Tylenol, all the other yeah. things that are <laughs> very harmful are on your kidneys. Mm -hmm. You know, I want people to understand, I mean, um, their bodies and I want them to be educated about, um, the things that they're doing and the choices that they're making with their mm -hmm. bodies for their health. Mm -hmm. And then that their health that literally depends on what they are filling their brain with to understanding their body. Yeah. So, yeah, and I hope true. that this, this, this is what this channel is about. This is channels empowering, um, empowering you and giving those true stories. And I'm so mm -hmm. glad I have people like you on. I just want to thank you. I mean, Sue, we're excited that your story is out. We will have the before and after photo. Um, yeah, I'll have to display. send it to you. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'll send it. So people yep. want it. And, um, and, if you can give any tip or word of advice and encouragement to um, a woman listening to this who is sitting somewhere or driving in their car and discouraged about what's going on with their body, what would you tell them? Oh, that's a good one because there's so many <laughs> things. But I, I, think, I think the first thing is to remember each day is a new day. There is no reason to have your mind stuck in the past about what you used to think and believe about this or doing it or not doing it. I would say take charge, begin today, take baby steps if you need to, get yourself informed, get a little bit of education under. And if you need to start easy, start easy. Um, it's not necessary to jump in uh, cold turkey and do the whole thing all at once. Um, it is a process, and it does not matter what age you are. I'm going to be 67. One lady I did some coaching with earlier this year uh, was 72, and she was suicidal when she contacted me. Everything had happened to her in her life with because her weight and her diabetes had taken taken such a bad turn for her Ugh. she was no longer walking she was using a walker and two canes when she walked she couldn't drive anymore she had become agoraphobic because she couldn't get out of the house because of the exhaustion uh, that she had so I did say to her you know it's a pretty big responsibility when somebody says you are my last hope and all you can do is say well let's begin today Let's begin today. And the first thing to do is let's just get a little bit of information here about what you need to 
get out of your kitchen. I would say that first, get certain things out of your mm -hmm. kitchen and take a look at what are you putting in your meals? Let's take a look at what low carb means and healthy fats. What do those mean? Mm -hmm. And yeah. let's just gradually add those kinds of foods that contain those. The, and people say, oh, I love to cook. And I said, well, you know what? You're going to cook better. You're going to find varieties of foods and things you can do with your meals you mm -hmm. never dreamed possible. Mm -hmm. I only became a baker of fancy cookies while I've been doing this. <laughs> and I, my cookies were selling so quickly in my first few months of making cookies, um, decorated cookies. And I don't eat very many of them. Um, but I try and use, you know, some things that are flavorful, whatever. Other people don't have to always do what I'm doing. But it doesn't mean you have to stop doing the things with food that you like to do. You know, if you like to bake and you like to cook, you might be surprised how much easier your meals become to make. Less ingredients for one thing, very flavorful, very tasty, whole foods. Just, you know, oh, uh, I just, I'm getting my mouth watering already. <laughs> um, and it's, it is simple. So uh, that's my advice to somebody who thinks that they're in a trapped situation. Start today. Just get a little bit of information, even listening to a podcast like this. Get Dr. Fung's book, one Absolutely. of the two books, and, and read them. Read yeah, them go and to the library them. if you can't afford it. Yeah. Go to the library. Get it in the library. I think it's even an audio book. I'm pretty sure it I is. have the diabetes code on audio book as well. And maybe if somebody likes using social media like Facebook, he has got an obesity code um, uh, and diabetes code Facebook group that you can join where there's a fair amount of people on there who are very supportive to give people who are new a start of understanding. So yep. it's not impossible. It's, I did it. I, I, I really came into this with not even knowing there was a thing called a Dr. Fong, not even knowing there was anything called anything beyond Weight Watchers or Jenny Craig. You know, I, I, just had, I, I just walked in and I just said, I'm at my bottom. I can't go any lower. I'm going to get sicker if I stay like this. And I can't afford to do that because I want to live my life. I want to live my life. Share it. I've got five gorgeous grandkids. And from ages, uh, age ranges of 2 to 16. And we do a lot of things with our kids and our grandkids. And I, I was at the point I could not enjoy things with them. I couldn't go to functions. I was exhausted. I think that's the biggest thing. You're so exhausted. You're carrying around all this extra weight. Uh, for one thing and every time I ate I felt guilty so guess what I eat less and I it causes another problem because your metabolism slows down you know it's it's a whole lot of stuff but anyways it's I know I'm talking a lot <laughs> but I'm really excited that other people might want to consider that this really doesn't have to it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg in fact it costs you nothing other than um, getting a book to, you know, or listen book. to this podcast because I have to enough to is, yeah. Exactly. And yeah. And um, you know, I think one other thing I need to mention is the support from family and friends. There can be resistance. And I think that's an issue that does need to be addressed at some point for some people. And that might be something you want to talk to somebody else about is how they've experienced sabotage <laughs> my husband was doing it let me tell you for a while he's now eating the way I eat <laughs> but you know some people are so resistant oh no you're making me do something you know you're trying to control my life no no but if you see I've dropped 50 pounds and then there's more stuff coming off and I feel good and what's to lose you know what's to absolutely lose. absolutely